After Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 10 dropped and it managed to simultaneously raise all the stakes, remind people how BG Resurrection works, make Himawari more important, and still somehow managed to piss off the people who said they wanted the story to adhere to the laws established in Naruto's manga and now those same people are mad the story did just that. Which is why in today's newest Naruto Explained video, I want to take the most dangerous route possible and I want to discuss something that you can already tell from the title and thumbnail is going to leave some people pissed off off because I think we need to discuss why this version of Himawari might be racing towards the tier of Baryama power levels. To the people who are going to be upset by that, I'll say two things. One, I ask that you put your feelings aside and you hold off on commenting until the end of the video. And two, being fully transparent with you, I'm not 100% a fan of this idea. And if you put a pistol in my head, I want to say no, but I have a nagging feeling in my gut that there is a twist that is coming regarding this that I cannot shake similar to how no spoilers the feeling I got a few chapters ago when Sukuna mentioned a certain character potentially using a certain power that they shouldn't have access to if you know you know the reason I think we need to at least consider the possibility of this reborn Karama retaining the power of burial mode it goes back to the concept of chakra itself some of the fox folklore that was used in Naruto's manga and while burial mode was a power that was was stated to be different akin to being like a nuclear fusion it was still a new type of power that is made from chakra itself and i want to start off by saying that the concept of burial mode in particular the colors are why i think we need to consider this because boruto's story it continues to add science and the colors for burial mode they look like a super red giant or a red giant itself which that which both of those are stages of the star when it gets to the old age phase and burial mode itself being compared to nuclear fusion it made me think of a supernova because that's what comes next either a supernova or a black hole in the case of a supernova it's the reignition of nuclear fusion however with Karama having passed away and now being reborn the reason I don't think we can rule out remnants of that power still being there it comes from what we've seen in Naruto so far when a Biju dies their power level isn't suddenly automatically reset there is nothing that states that in the manga or even remotely implies it in the Naruto manga, but what we do see is that the Biju appears to grow in power as time passes on, and that would line up with the Katsune folklore that the concept of the Biju loosely borrows from and changes around in order to fit into the world of Naruto. Power like that usually leaves behind vestiges of its power unless we see a full extraction from the human body, like when a Jinchuriki has the Biju's chakra forcibly removed via extraction and they die or through another method like we saw with Baramo where it removed the Biju chakra from Naruto without killing him or it was something physical like losing the Sharingan that belonged to another person like we saw when Kakashi lost Obito's eye. However that's why I think this is a bit different because we've seen exceptions to the rule be made. Madara he had no eyes but he was still able to use the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan power to use a partial and instable full body Susano and he was shown using the Renegon's Praetor Path power to absorb chakra from Hashirama, in particular his Sage Mode chakra. We most famously saw that even after losing the Husk of the Ten Tails and losing the Biju chakra that made him a Ten Tails Jinchuriki, Obito retained enough of the Six Pass power that came from being a Ten Tails Jinchuriki to steal a small bit of the power of one Renegon Jubi Madara. When he died, he died still retaining a small bit of that Six Pass power and the Six Pass chakra chakra that came from it and when his chakra flew from his ashes into his body and when his chakra flew from the ashes of his body and into Kakashi's eyes Kakashi directly tells us that Obito's six pass chakra is something he got and that it drastically amped up the power of his Mangekyo Sharingan which is how he could use a perfect Susano despite not having eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Obito's chakra transferred to him even in death and it remained there until Obito went to the afterlife and took the six pass chakra and the Sharingan with him. When Kurama died, he died recently just having used burial mode and when Ishiki was shown stomping Naruto out of that form early, we were told burial mode when it runs out it would lead to death. Yet Ishiki stomped Naruto out that form early, had him squirming under his foot while he threatened Kawaki that he would rip Naruto's chest open and it wouldn't be until later the Naruto and Kurama 
enough what happened. I don't think we can personally rule it out 100% and that Kurama went to the afterlife retaining the power that came from burial mode or even part of it itself. The signs are there because we're in uncharted territory, which is why I have that small pit in my stomach that this might be used as a way to upscale Himawari, which I'm not going to be mad about that. Think about it for a second. Damon, he sensed an enormous power hidden inside of Himawari that made him excited to fight her and he fully expected her to dodge his attack when he charged her ready to punch her. He didn't show that level of excitement when he saw Code without his limbers. He looked downright bored at the prospect of even fighting Code and when Code said he felt like he couldn't lose to anyone now, Damon looked like he was sleepy. He did confirm that Code without limbers was indeed stronger than Jigen and that Naruto and Sasuke shouldn't be a problem for him, which despite not swapping hands with either of them, Damon would be able to come to an accurate assessment of their power just through the concept of linear scaling. I know that hurts Naruto and Sasuke's fans. I know that hurts Naruto and Sasuke fans' feelings, but facts are facts. Despite what Boruto was saying, that Damon wouldn't be so tough talking if Naruto or Sasuke were there, he would have beaten both of them while eating a box of animal crackers and holding a blanket in the other hand. If Himawari only had the power of the Nine Tails and the Chakra of the Biju Sanctuary that was linked to Kurama as Kurama being the protector of it, there would be no reason for him to get excited at fighting someone with that level of power because it's less than Jigen and it's less than the same code who he didn't even look excited fighting. However, if Kurama who just happened to use Baryamo's power, respawn inside of Himawari, who was already born with a small amount of Krama's chakra, that would make sense because that would be drastically higher than Jigen because it's in the same tier as Ishiki, even if it's not the full power of Baryamo itself. And that's the one thing we do know about Damon that makes sense. The only thing that gets him truly excited if he isn't bullying Bug, he isn't riding coat like a horse, he isn't stomping on Code's back, he isn't trolling Boruto or Kawaki, he isn't sleeping in Ada's lap, it is the prospect of fighting someone strong enough to make him use his full power in a fight, something he's never done before. And that level of power, that's something that would do it. It just comes down to if this is the case, can Himawari control the power? Chakra is used for more than ninjutsu. It is also used to amp up your physical stats, from speed to strength to stamina, depending on how you use it. People like Rock Lee, due to Lee not being able to use ninjutsu, chose to amp up his physical stats for taijutsu. Mike Guy, unlike Rock Lee, Mike Guy can perform ninjutsu, but he chooses not to waste chakra on anything other than amping his physical stats needed for his strong fist fighting style taijutsu. The Raikage uses chakra for speed. Tsunade and Sakura use it for striking power. Kakashi set aside chakra for stamina when he needed to use the Sharingan. Chakra levels have been used as a way in the past to directly scale people in terms of power, not how dangerous they are in terms of raw power itself. We literally see Naruto and Sasuke both do it in Naruto Volume 70, where they were shown already scaling Kaguya who hadn't even fully emerged over Three-Eyed Madara just by sensing the chakra levels of Kaguya to the point where Sasuke is saying he didn't think someone this strong could ever exist. And this is in spite of Sasuke haven't just met the floating space boogers of Hagoromo who was in possession of six path Senjutsu. Using chakra to directly scale people is something we have a precedent for. It wouldn't mean as much if say Kaguya wasn't able to control it and that applies to anyone else. It doesn't matter how much chakra you have if you are wasting it. That's where this whole Himawari situation gets very tricky because if we say this is the case then it means she has room to grow. Kurama he teed it up for us by saying whether or not they live or die it's going to depend on how she uses the power that he gives her part of me thinks that we're going to see flash as a himawari drawing out those monster levels of power because i've been pounding the drums for a while now that her writing comes across as very much like paying homage to son gohan from dragon ball this feels like her gohan versus second form frieza moment where she's fighting at a high level briefly and she stuns everyone more than it feels like the gohan versus cell moment where it's fighting at a high level beyond anyone else on the good guy side before powering up again to defeat the bad guy this feels like kawaki and delta they're coming in to play that role that piccolo and vegeta did during that frieza fight following the rage amp that gohan 
Pokemon got. I think we're getting a build up to Naruto's baby girl fully controlling that power in a way that doesn't rely on an emotional trigger to unlock it. Narratively, it makes sense that we get that escalation because Naruto's power wasn't going to make Damon get excited. The narrative at the end of part one, it was drilling in our heads to start expecting power levels that are Jigen plus coming out of the time skip because the whole strongest Jigen or stronger than Jigen but weaker than Ishiki narrative, it kept getting repeated over and over again that we knew that that level of power, that was gonna be the floor for most of these characters. And there are gonna be characters who get power cliff to surpass Ishiki and Burial mode. Just as Madara and Hashirama were seen as the pinnacle power for Shinobi for a majority of the series outside of that mythical prime heroes and it's like a unicorn everyone talks about it but nobody ever saw it and we eventually got to a point where multiple characters by the end of the manga were stronger than the alive madara and hashirama who fought at the final valley particularly all four members of the original team seven there's something being cooked up here with himawari's character that has me wondering which direction are things really going in in the future well i know some of you guys are like me and you're not a huge fan of the idea i do still think we cannot rule out her potentially surpassing those burial mode and ishiki levels of power in the future which clicking on this video on the right breaks down the 15 strongest boruto characters and the video on the left breaks down the 15 strongest demon slayers 